Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today, I have a channel for you. We're going to have a dialogue with someone very special and very mellow. How about that for energy? And I'm going to tell you a little bit how I met this spirit today, how this spirit came in today, and why I, why I am doing this today. All right, so I'm gonna let him come in. I'm gonna let his energy come in first so you can kind of feel it, see if you can feel it. Oh, he just hits me right at my heart chakra. He's right here, off to my left a little bit. This is the energy vibration of Mr. John Lennon. Yeah, if you're a Beatles fan, oh my goodness. So here's how John came in this morning for me. I was going through a procedure at a local hospital, getting an MRI for a shoulder thing I have going on. And as part of the procedure, I had to have an injection. Dun, dun, dun. All right, something I'm gonna tell you guys about me is that I'm a total wimp. Yes, I've had four children, totally naturally, but not good with the needle situation. If you are in healthcare, thank you so much for being patient with people like me who inside are freaking out and on the outside probably look like a deer in the headlights. You can tell because we're sweaty, we're shaky, we try to pretend like we're fine but our breath is shallow because we're scared. That was me this morning. So, <sighs> So what happened was I have a spiritual helper. If you watch Above Life Channel, you know. Prince is one of my common confidants that I chat with in the afterlife. And so he showed up and he's like, you know, I'm not really good with this kind of situation. Not really into the medical stuff, but uh, I'll try to help you be mellow. You know, it's cool. You're going to be fine. You're going to be cool. And <laughs> then I see David Bowie, who I've also interviewed at Above Life Channel, whose energy, by the way, is very just it's calming and it's creative and lighthearted and fun but it is also very ascended like just very transcendent very wisdom just so a uh, kind of advanced if you uh, if i would use a human term i mean they don't use that in afterlife it's not really a term there's no hierarchy there but it feels like he's very evolved is how i'll say it so then he shows up and he says mate let me handle this I can help her. <laughs> He's like, yes, you're not good with this medical stuff. I can help her, he says. And I kind of laughed. He's like, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, and it's true. He does have a, he will call me. His energy just comes in and it just like, everything goes into perspective with David Bowie. Very nice man. Very nice spiritual energy. And if you're a fan, you understand that. And so then where's John Lennon coming? So I'm on the table having the pre-procedure because I had to get this shot the size of a freaking pencil, like pencil, needle the size of a pencil into the joint of my shoulder because they have to put like some dye, contrast, they call it. I thought, interesting term, contrast. Hmm, <laughs> doesn't belong there, does it? And so they had to do that and I wasn't prepared for that. I thought I had to have like a shot when they sent injection. I thought, oh, just a shot, no big deal. I can handle that. Uh, no, more than that. It's like a multi-step deal. I was kind of freaking out inside. I was trying to be brave and I was totally, I was by myself by choice. I was like, it's okay, I can handle this, no problem. Trying to calm myself down, listening to Prince and David Bowie talk back and forth. So it was great. It was distracting. It was perfect. And then all of a sudden I see this like little image of this head and the glasses, the David Bowie glasses, the circular iconic glasses. Or I'm sorry, not David Bowie. <laughs> I'm distracted here. The iconic glasses of John Lennon and the big cir you know, circles. And I'm like, oh, and he's like, oh, he's like, man, he's like, Imagine peace. Imagine peace, man. Imagine peace. He's like, oh, man. Like thinking, he's like, oh, man. Like I have to help her out because these two are just going to, you know. And he's like, imagine peace. And he was trying to be funny. And he was. He's got a great sense of humor, too. But he's super mellow. And it does kind of feel like he's a little, um, how do I say this politically correct? 
like high or something <laughs> like he's smoking too much dope or something like he's a little like yeah man like really mellow he feels really mellow in fact his voice is kind of a darker like a darker tone um a deeper tone a bit and it's kind of like from the back of his throat and kind of drops kind of whispering almost a little mellow vibe and he did as soon as he came in i was like whoa yeah like tranquil and so that's how he feels so but i'm curious about what you have to offer and what you'd like to share from the afterlife perspective i don't have a lot of questions like i didn't write anything down to prepare to ask you but i wanted to connect with you and first of all i want to say thank you because your presence really did feel very soothing to me and very calming and i appreciate that and I recently got a gift from one of my clients um, at a retreat I did and it was, she lives in New York City and she gave me an Imagine from the gardens, the Central Park from the garden where your memorial is. And it's that beautiful image of that stone circle with all the beautiful pieces, facets of it and it says Imagine on it and it's a shirt and then I also have a hat, it's so great. I should wear that, I should have wore that in this one. I'll have to show it to you guys. I'll post it on my Facebook page. Okay, I'll post it on my Facebook page so you can see it at Above Life Channel on Facebook, all right. And I loved it, I just, and I have a connection with that energetic vibration of that song Imagine because it's related to my work as a clearer. I've done um, clearing work for uh, almost four years now, I think three and a half years, conscious clearing work which is kind of like an energy thing for those of you who don't really, aren't really in the, in the ling lingo loop where all the psychic stuff and personal development stuff has so many different, everybody has different words they use for stuff and it, clearing is like a form of uh, healing. Okay, it's like an active form of healing to choose a, that we choose to engage in to be better. You know, it's personal development, it's, it, it's willing to really work on our whole selves and love our whole selves more fully and a deeper connection with our spirit is how it feels to me and collaboration great collaboration he says he's like that's very well that's very well said it looks like i don't know he's smoking it, to be honest with you guys it looks like he's smoking a joint or something it's really skinny though i don't know if joints look like that i don't know i'm assuming but it doesn't look smell like a cigarette and it's a little on like a wrap so either that or he's smoking tobacco that he rolls himself you know and uh so he's got that with the paper and stuff and uh he says you know breathing is an important thing he's kind of it's kind of bouncing on his lip breathing is an important thing humans should do it more often Breathing is an important thing. Humans should do it more often. Are you going to expand on that? I think I know what you mean. I could feel it. He really, you really resonate with my heart chakra. I can feel the knowledge, the heart wisdom. Heart wisdom coined term by John Lennon in the afterlife. Heart wisdom. And I know, I feel like I know what you mean by this, but let's everybody just breathe deep for a second. Exhale out first. Then breathe in. Yeah, he says, yeah, I like that, I like that. So the breath with intention provides a rhythm to the body that is like nothing else. It is not, it creates a somewhat altered state that you can achieve in other ways, a heightened state of awareness, but your sensitivity will do much, will be well suited. He says, will be well suited to deeper breathing. That deep breath is that choice to connect more fully with life is what he says. Okay, cool, great. So John, I know that you had a very strong spiritual component to your life at some points. Um, I think some of somewhat when you were with the Beatles and, um, and then beyond as well. Can you talk a little bit about spirituality in the human context in your experience and maybe how it could be different now for you in the afterlife, what your understanding of spirituality is? Right away he says, uh, he's acknowledging me for not using the term religion. He said, very good, very good. You know, spirituality is a practice, a devotion to the heart and the soul of who you are. It is unique 
to the individual, but it is a path that you choose. And it looks different at different times in your life, in your life experience. It's really important for people not to, he's taking a swig, like kind of, not to compare your path to others. If you're gonna to compare to anyone, compare to yourself, to become a better evolution of yourself, you can do that. It is possible to achieve that in your human life, in one human life, in one string or stretch of your human life existence. It is possible to have many experiences where you shed different aspects of who you've been to become more closer to God that you would say, you would call God that, that mighty source of sunlight in the sky that beams down upon you is not something, that symbolism is very profound, isn't it? That golden yellow and the white, that light, translucent, you know, it's like iridescent. It's like the kind of, it's almost like dust in a room that has, is light filled, that's the energy, that's, that's the expression in the human nature and the human realm of experience. And it, is, it, is, it can be a very private journey and passage. No, he doesn't say journey, he says passage. It can be a very private passage. And others, you can't ask others to understand. You can't ask them to understand, he says. He puts his hands like this. He says, you can't ask them to understand. They have not yet come to know. And he goes on to say, and in the afterlife, <laughs> you know, it is above life. That is true. It is a, a hybrid version of connection, of peace and expanded reality. Like you can't know when you have a human mind that keeps you stuck here in the small view of, of the small view screen that you have but it does serve its purpose. Humankind, it's not about the types of people or cultures or even civilizations or even viewpoints. There's a diversity that is rich that provides the backdrop for the, the reality of who you are in the context of spirit and human. And you might not realize it, but the things that you move through, the trials that you move through in your human life is a direct correlation to that, your, what your spirit has asked for. And so there is a plan. There is indeed a plan. But it's more like uh, lyrics, writing lyrics to a song and finding the right melodies. It's more like the human part is like the lyrics and the words that are chosen but the melodies and the harmonies are co-created prior to your experiences, before you got here into a body. The melodies and the harmonies are the vibrations and the frequencies of, of teams of members of your band, your orchestra. And that is for you to decide. You know, I think there's a long debate about fate and destiny and understanding these concepts and I think it is better to choose that of a dreamer, to feel the dream-like energy in a dream-like state, to, to perceive life as a dream, and then to allow yourself, to afford yourself the, the discomfort, knowing that when you wake up and you realize that maybe this path isn't the right one for me at this point, or maybe I've learned enough in this relationship, business arrangement, school, whatever that may be for you, that signals a change, a shift, the energies are coherent and there is a coherency. But you cannot always know that during the life experience you're having as you're having it, which is why I think reflection is valuable. He says reflection is valuable, but it's not something to get caught in. If you get caught in that, it's like a merry ground it's hard to get off of. And it can wreck your understanding in a way that 
causes you to sit down, not even to try a different path or try something new. You just stop. You, you, it, it makes you stagnant. And that's not what I would wish for people. I wouldn't wish that for anyone. Okay. This is profound. And it's very deep. Can you talk? And I'm, and I'm like feeling the energy of it. Are you guys feeling that? Can you feel that? And it's like, now it's beyond, because it came into the heart and it spread out the heart, expanded the heart. And now he's coming down deeper into the solar plexus, the information, I can feel it. We talk a little bit about meditation and maybe um, the benefits of that. Now that you're a spirit and you know how connection works, can you give us some tips about connection? And is meditation a way to connect? Can you talk about that a little bit? He says, and he's kind of, and he says, you're very practical. I like that. <laughs> like, practical isn't something that I don't know that I would use to describe myself, but thank you. <laughs> no, no, he says, no, no, really. And then he kind of puts it out like, a, like an ashtray. No, really, really. I can appreciate that. And he shows me a zebra. Like I literally in my, remember you guys, I'm clairvoyant, so I see stuff a lot. And so I'm seeing in my third eye is an image of a zebra. And a zebra is a totem, and a totem is a spirit animal. And to me, and you guys, Google it. Just look it up, whatever it means. Google it. Maybe it's a totem. Maybe it means something for you that's different than what I'm going to share right now. That's part of these videos are for you to gain something for yourself personally whenever you listen, whenever you watch. Look up zebra totem animal, zebra spirit animal. See what the message is for you as you're watching and listening. So, so the zebra energy vibration, when you instantly showed me that, and you talked to me about being practical, and I was asking you for tips about how we connect, how can we connect with the afterlife, and talking about meditation doesn't work, you know, what do you, what do you have for advice for us? Come on, come on. And you show me a zebra, and instantly what zebra reminds me of is a combination of the horse energy, which is freedom and intuition. So that tells me we have free choice. We are free to choose if we want to connect or not. Is that accurate? Very, he says, very good. You are good with the symbolism. You are an artist. He says, very artistic. Creative, he says. He doesn't say artist. He said creative. You are creative. You are a, you are a creative. He just said, you are a creative. So we have the freedom to choose. That's what the part of the zebra means. But the multicolored stripes are an interesting contrast. That word came up earlier in our conversation. Contrast. So the black and the white. The shadows and the light of our life experience, all of it creates who we are. So we have freedom to choose what our contrast is, what we do with the contrast. Is that the point? He kind of sits back and he says, might be, or not. Who am I to say? Who am I to choose for you, he says. Hmm, it's not for me to choose. It's not for me to choose for you or for whoever, wh whoever, for your, he says viewers. Sounds kind of weird when he says that, but, or for your viewers. Ah, who am I to choose? I'm not going to choose. Okay, so it is our choice to make connection. That's what you know in the afterlife. And is everybody capable of connection, of contact? Yes. He says yes, but some don't know that. They don't know it. So what do you mean by knowing it? Like, how would somebody know that they're able to connect? Well, and he says, it's as you say, you have to believe that. If something isn't possible for you, it's not possible for you. Nobody can change your mind. You have the freedom to choose, to choose what you believe. And what you believe creates your reality. You've heard this. And he mentions the law of attraction and the energy of abundance. He says that's a nature law or a natural law, nature's law. You know, you can study, scientists study the cycles of life and those cycles, those patterns are things that are innate within every human. And those patterns are easily predictable. And for you, it is based on what you believe, what you believe creates your reality. So, okay. Wow. Okay, so I had to stop for a second because that's like a... 
push, that's, a, that's heavy like to process. So everyone can connect. We all have the capability, capacity, and ability, correct? You're born with it. You're born with that inside of you. And he like points to my microphone and it's like a receiver, kind of like a microphone, like I can speak and you can hear me. So it's connected to your soul, soul's voice. Your soul can speak and you can hear your soul, but you have to choose that. You have to choose that. And the microphone and the cording is your beliefs. The cording is your beliefs, the cords, the electrical cords, the extension cord is your, your belief. Either it works or it don't. Okay, that's me, not him. All right, I would love to chat with you more because you're very deep and I feel like you have the spirituality piece. People would love that. But I also feel like you have some business acumen. Like I think you're really smart when it comes to business. I think you have a level of, of depth about you and I feel like you maybe made, and I don't know a lot about your career other than just what the general public would know that you're part of the Beatles and all that. And um, I also know that you were assassinated. Someone shot you and he said, yeah. And he says, in the back of the head. Why, why do you shoot somebody in the back of the head? He's like, that's just cowardice. He said, that's just cowardice. Um, he said, but I knew, I kind of knew. I could feel it that morning. I kind of knew something was uh, getting ready to change. How did it, how did, um, I feel like you didn't make the best business decisions, but I feel like you were smart business-wise, intuitively, intuitive business-wise. I would love to dig into that topic with you just personally. That's interesting. But let's talk a little bit about your transition, if I may ask about that. How, so you kind of said you kind of felt like things were shifting, something was was gonna be different. Um, how, so at the moment that you were shot, did you die instantly? Did you leave your body instantly or what? Tell, can you talk about that a little bit? I said, yeah. He said, yeah, people are so interested in that, aren't they? They really do want to know that. I was told you would ask me about that. I, I would say, okay, so let's see what he's saying. He's trying to kind of remember it. He can't really remember it. He's like, you know, it happens so fast. One minute you have a body and one minute you don't kind of thing. He's like, first you're there, then you're not kind of thing. I remember, he says, okay, so he's kind of showing me, okay, the imagery of like standing outside of his body and looking at his body crumpled down on the ground. And he's all hunched up, cuddled sideways, like on the ground. And I see him with a jacket on. It kind of looks like a leather type jacket with a lighter shirt on. And then it looks like he might have jeans on. I think his hair is longer, it looks longer. Yeah, it looks longer. He might have had something around his head because it looks like that. Um, I was shot in the head, it feels like, and not totally the back, but I didn't see it coming is what he's saying. As far as location, I almost feel like the guy crossed the street. I think it was the guy that killed him, wasn't it? He said, yeah. He said, yeah, that blindsided me. Like it comes across the street and boom, and then it's done. It's just done. And he said, I remember birds, lots of birds. Like it felt like, um, like when something, someone startles the birds in the park and they all fly away together. I remember hearing and kind of feeling like that was what was happening, startling and then all the birds. And then I felt, I did feel a connection to Jesus. That which many of you would recognize as Jesus. For me, there was multiple images of Jesus, but there was most certainly a connection to. It's weird because he kind of gets me, I feel multiple facets. So I feel like Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad. Um, I feel really strong Muhammad. I'm not sure why that is, but I feel Muhammad. But I see it as Jesus. In my eyes and my visualization image, I see it as a Jesus. He says it's all the same. I'm like, I know that, but people that are listening don't know that. Did you feel pain? Just in an instant. I, it's hard to recall that. I, pro, I probably did. I might have, yes. But it doesn't, that's no mind. I, there's no memory of that. There's no memory of any of that. I remember my wife, uh, Yoko, she was very upset. And I remember seeing her very upset. I was alone, but she, it looks like she showed up. 
I don't know, it's so weird. He must have died really close to his apartment or something or an apartment or a studio or something because I see like steps going up and then like almost like um, row houses, like brick, brick buildings or something, um, like really close together. And I see him on the steps and that like on, the, on his street, right on his street, it looks like. And then I see her like, and I don't know when this happened or what have you, but I see her coming out or coming to the scene or something. Um, but I'm confused about that because it's all disjointed. So I don't know if time froze for him or what he's trying to show me, but he's not real chatty about the whole actual death scene. He said, yeah, it's not, it's not very helpful. He says to people, it's not, it's not really helpful. I mean, I know that, but it's interesting for people to understand how, what we feel, because I think there's a lot of fear around death and I'm trying to dispel some of that. And so that people don't feel like, you know, they're taught that to fear God and really God, universe, creator, universal consciousness is all about love and expansion and growth and not limits and punishment and fear. And so I think that's an important piece. That's why I ask about the transition and what it felt like so people understand. So it's not like somebody comes to judge you and decide if you're on the A bus or the C bus. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not like that, right? He says, not at all. You know, it's not at all. And it's the one minute you're here and the next minute you're in this altered state of consciousness. To use your words, he says, to use your words. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. He says, it's a pleasure. And he goes like this. It's a pleasure, like namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, wow. This is a long interview or a conversation with John Lennon. Wow. Afterlife video with John Lennon. How cool is that? This is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Thank you so much for being here. I hope your spirit is inspired. And if it is, make sure you give this video a like. Share it if you really think it could inspire someone else or someone else might be interested in it. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red bell to subscribe so you never miss a new weekly channel. Remember, the purpose is to inspire your spirit to fill you up with hope and because it's your life. So live it, live it. Thanks for watching.